Uh, you're like, all right, guys, we're starting to get into the home stretch. Ladies and gentlemen, your next comic, very, very funny guy. Give it up for Mr. Josh Maxwell. All right, everybody, the home stretch. We'll try and keep this quick. Uh, who here uh, plays like extreme sports? Anybody? Yeah? Yeah. Two people. Yeah. Skateboarding? Skateboarding. Are you black? Kinda. All right, this joke is not going to work, Ben, but we're going to do it anyway. Here's my premise, and this guy is obviously the, uh, the exception that's going to prove this rule. But you would say, like, most of your skateboarder friends, they're probably white dudes, right? Some of them. Come on now. There are a lot of them. Like a ridiculous amount. Like, they don't have jobs. They started skateboarding when they were 12. It's about the only thing they're good at. I got like 20 friends like this. They're all the same. Here's the reason why. When you go and watch most of the X Games, we're just going to pretend like this guy's not excluded. And uh, you go watch the X Games, they're usually white dudes, right? You know? And, and, and I think it takes a certain mentality to, uh, to do the risk-taking kind of things that people do. And the real problem I have with this is because it's not that white people will do these things because they have something in them. It's because they have something in them that they're white. Now here, this is how it goes. Just follow me here. This isn't racist. This is fucking clever. All right, now we all started based in a fucking humanity, 12 people, right, in Africa. We're all black. The sun is like right fucking there. Your skin, it's got a block on it. That's right, Shannon. Happy birthday, by the Thank way. You. That's right. She looks good for 19, doesn't she, folks? Yeah. That's right. So everybody's black, all right? And what do we do? We're like hunter-gatherers, you know? You gotta go out and fucking kill like the wildebeest. But there was probably this one douchebag in the fucking group that was like, yo, bro, wouldn't it be fucking gnarly if I went and jumped on the back of that wildebeest and see how fucking long I could ride him? And everyone's like, no, that's, that's a fucking terrible idea. Please don't go do that. And then he's already halfway there, jumps on, Whoa! gets thrown off, pissed this wildebeest off, chases the rest of them fucking down, they lose their meal for the night, and they go back and have one of those like survival tribal meetings, you know, like, all right, listen, let's get real. Brody has got to go. We are not going to survive any longer if that asshole keeps doing this shit. So they kick him off the fucking island. Now Africa, it's a pretty big place, but he had to go elsewhere. And so, as the generations progressed, the farther and farther away Brody's children got from the equator, their skin required less melanin. You know? It's just evolution. Argue with Charles Darwin, alright? So by the time you get up to like places where like the skin can be as pale as the freshly driven snow, you find that all you have left are Brody's retarded ass children. You're like, Ugh, something's wrong with my adrenal gland. Sorry, that was personal. Fucking talk through a whole bunch of people's sets. Shut the fuck up, you know? Yeah! Yeah, I know. Like me standing here in my fucking soapbox. Like, yeah, fuck you for coming out. I'm dirty by alcohol. Such a fucking. You know what? Fuck my joke about being white. But the whole point is that the Mexicans, they're only like halfway there. And, you know, they only went half as far. But the Aztecs are really fucked up. So you gotta see there's a little point to my plan. Anyway, let's go to the back of the hand here, folks. That's right. I was watching some Mady's movies today because you guys were kindly playing them for us, and I noticed how sad it was that so few of the actresses had big movies. You know? Like, they remedy that real quick with the snip, snip, push, push, tuck. Like, those kind of big movies, I like to see them. Now, who guys... Who guys? Who guys? Any of you guys in here like big boobs? Yeah! Woo! Yeah! You're fucking picky. All right, I like my Halloween, or my Halloween, I like my Hollywood actresses and chicks on Halloween to have big boobs, but my girlfriends, I don't care. Because here's the thing, what are big boobies good for? They're good for this. She's gonna let you do that once. And they're good for titty fucking, which I only wanna do once, all right? That's a whole lot of fucking effort. All right, I start out, I start out like down here, and then I get to like down here, and all of a sudden I gotta crawl again. You do titty fucking one time. It's for the mind, it's not for the dick. It's like, oh man, remember that time I titty fucked you? Oh, oh god, that's spectacular. Um, I, uh, uh, contrary to what Anthony said earlier when he was up here, not all roommates fuck. Okay, I am I am Anthony's current roommate. We're not banging, but 
I will say this. <laughs> it, it's got me thinking. You know, like we went out to this uh, this bar, Babes, all right, and it's like a gay bar, lesbo bar, whatever it is. And it, it, it reminded me of another time where I'd gone out with friends when I was back home in Michigan. Oh, we got to this club where it was gay dudes, but I didn't know because he said he was going to pick up a waitress. He had this this drive to turn a lesbian. A lot of guys have it. Fuck, I got it. Look, like, it's just a fun thing to do. Like, where no man has gone before. <laughs> um, Captain Kirk shit, you know? And you get a lot of talk when you go there about, like, I don't want to fucking go to the gay bar, dude. I don't want to go to the gay bar. It's like, you, you know, you really should go. It's very flattering. Like, at first you get in there and you're like, what, for me? Is that a drink? Oh, that's a drink for me. I do really well with the gay guys. It's really, it's, it, well, it's disconcerting, I suppose. That's probably why I don't do so well with the ladies. But... After a while, you start to feel this, like, heat from the gaze of the guys, you know what I mean? And it's sort of the thing, it's not really homophobia to not want to get, go to the gay bar. It's what every waitress feels like when it's, like, last call at the bar. It's awful to be hit on by a dude. It's not homophobia, it's self-preservation. We're disgusting creatures, and I don't want a guy, straight or gay, ever talking to me. It's disgusting. Love you, Anthony. All right, guys, my name is Josh Max. You guys have been tech chatting. Thank you very much. Josh Maxwell, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, got to know about it. All right, uh, your next comic, this is his first time here at McCormick's Irish Pub doing stand up. So, ladies and gentlemen, make him feel welcome. Welcome. <laughs> wow. All right, make him feel welcome. Abedin Abu Katwala. I'm really sorry if I fucked that up. Your next, your, your next comedian, and I say comedian because she's a lady. All right. She's very funny. She's a regular at the Richmond Funny Bone. Please give it up for Miss Adrian Bowman. Late. They had to wake me up to come up here. Alright. It's been an interesting show. I love watching comedy shows mostly for the audience. We all laughed a lot more at Jaya and Odyssey's laughs. They were pretty entertaining. So are you really in a band? I was. You were? Yeah. I was too. I was in a rock band. And um I would perform at the National. I was, a, I am a singer, and I'm not a big fan of rock music. I can just sing it. So when I was at the National, I wanted to support the other bands, so I went out and watched them. And there was also another black singer. <laughs> he did heavy metal. He was a heavy metal singer. I was amazed, but. Cool guy, not into the music, but you might know him. I probably knew he's in the union. <laughs> right, at the meetings. The me Alright. <laughs> I I'm also a model. Um not that kind of model. Mostly body paint and I sit there and people paint my portrait. But I did go to a model call recently and I tried to dress up. I'm not really fashionable. Obviously like I put a bow on my beer gut. <laughs> but I know you guys are thinking, what beer gut? So it worked. Um, <laughs> I went to a model call recently and I had my portfolio and the people there are like, I look like an average girl. I know. I don't think I'm better looking than most women. But I gave them my portfolio, and they were like, Oh my god, she does clean up nice. <laughs> they couldn't believe with makeup I look different. So, yeah, alright, on to the jokes. This week, Facebook has been bugging me. Of course, you see politics and the weather. Are people's lives that boring? You have to talk about the weather. They like it. It's nice. It's not nice. It's cold. So I figure I have to move because I'm sick of the weather already. So I'm trying to figure out where. Obviously I can't go up north, but as Max explained, I'm um, made for cold weather, I guess. As 
as white as I am. I have that European skin. But just because I match snow doesn't mean I like snow. I don't like a lot of white things like snow. <laughs> Man. <laughs> All right. I'm sick of cock blocks. It happens a lot. Um, periods are one thing. <laughs> if that's not happening, children. <laughs> I don't have any kids of my own, but I date guys with kids. And that's kind of annoying. Because if they're not around, I'm on my period. <laughs> You've all heard of MILF? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mom, I'd like to fuck. Alright. Well, I do date guys with kids, so the only thing I really can look forward to at the moment is becoming a SMILF. Stepmom. Yeah. So I'm from the island of Caucasia. A lot of you are from there as well, I noticed. So you are familiar with our nice mayonnaise streams. <laughs> our ranch waterfalls. And the rivers of cheese with macaroni fish flying out. Because this is our stereotype of what we eat. We need to change that. I also like fried chicken more than black people. So we really need to change that up. I don't like watermelon that much. Oh no. What about chocolate? Really? You know I like chocolate. So I can't move back home anytime soon. Cut to this joke. I can't move back home because the last time I was there, I saw my dad naked. Kentucky? What up? <laughs> what was scary is that he didn't dodge out of the way or try and cover up. He just stood there. And I did what any of us females would do. I was curious. So I... I had to do a double take, and that's why I date black men. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. yeah. So now my dad can't get mad when I bring a black guy home. Oh, no. Thank you guys. My name is Adrian Bowman. You've been great. Adrian Bowman, ladies and gentlemen. She likes black dudes. I think I guys like today. Uh, we're into the home stretch. Got just got two comedians left. Uh, ladies and oh three, sorry. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, your next comic. Love this dude. Ladies and gentlemen, Leo Morena. <laughs> Fuck yeah, McCormick's. Give it up and shit. All right. I want to say something right now to everybody here. I believe in God. I don't jive with atheists at all, okay? And the reason I believe in God so much is because I believe there's a divine force in the universe that fucking hates me. <laughs> all right? Let me give you an example, okay? First time I ever made out with a woman was in the backseat of my car in high school. Okay, and we're going at it, right? When it gets done, like hot and heavy, it's raining, men comes on. And so from then on, every time I hear that song, I pop a boner. <laughs> so whenever somebody plays that song and I hear it, I have a lot of explaining to do. <laughs> and they usually don't believe the story I just told you. It's true, the same, okay? Also, I want to say, I love cats and dogs. I'm an animal lover, all right? But it's something you have to understand. Dogs are always loyal. And cats are dicks. That's why you always see C&I dogs and not C&I cats. If you saw a C&I cat, you'd probably follow, you know, you'd lead the dude out to some, like, construction site, 
to some low-hanging girder or some open cement pit. Dude falls in, he's all dying, the cat's like, that's what you get for serving me dry food, motherfucker. <laughs> exactly. You guys ever do a ball game? Get some peanuts? Get that peanut that only has like one nut in it? I call those Lance Armstrongs. <laughs> <laughs> Seems appropriate. Just saying. <laughs> that counts, I'll, I'll take that. But. Anyway, I don't know if you guys can tell or not, but I love barbecue. <laughs> so fucking great. And I like it for two reasons, all right? One, no matter where you go, you pretty much know where you're getting, menu-wise, all right? And two, they play pretty much the same music, either like blues or folk, okay? And the reason I like going to those places is because I can go to any random place anywhere, get pretty much like, you know, like a pulled pork sandwich, and I don't have to worry about listening to that goddamn Gautier song. <laughs> They're not going to play that shit, trust me. It doesn't work out, all right? Anyway, I just want to throw out there that I'm a nerd. Woo. And when I was growing up, being a nerd, I had to admit something. I was kind of a whore as a child, okay? Because I remember days, whole days I spent as a child doing nothing but blowing cartridges. <laughs> <laughs> and there was times when I would, have to, I would have to blow the system as well, okay? <laughs> Because you know that, that had to happen at some point. And I remember one time specifically when I was like six. I'm like on my knees in front of the NES, blowing it into the fucking system. And my dad walks in. I could just see the disappointment on his face. Just received there. He's just like, oh my god, what the fuck did I fucking make just now? This dude on his knees blowing shit. God fucking damn it. But anyway, no, seriously, like, that's how much of a nerd I am, okay? Like, I will take, like, game culture and try to bring it into my day-to-day -day life. Like, I remember recently I went to go buy a pack of cigarettes, and I was short about 10 cents. So I just went outside and started hitting bricks. <laughs> Put change out. I got a mushroom, I got high as shit, but eh. <laughs> they didn't give me cigarettes, unfortunately. But eh, whatever, it happens, you know? But speaking, speaking of that, though, anybody else here likes to do drugs? Yeah, dude, like fucking drugs rule, all right? I'm just saying. And I'll just, I want to leave you guys on this, okay? You guys know you're good at something we can do while you're fucking high, okay? Like, for example, there was a dude that used to pitch for the Pittsburgh Pirates. His name was Doc Ellis. He once pitched a no-hitter while completely fucked up on LSD. That's a huge accomplishment, I'm telling you, all right? Because I, I, I can't even fucking, like, beat, like, the first level of Mario while fucking smoking a bowl, all right? So for this dude to do this shit was amazing. And I would love to hear the play-by-play -play on that shit. Bottom of the ninth, two strikes, two outs. Doc Ellis is one pitch away from pitching a no-hitter. He seems to be foaming at the mouth. <laughs> he is now completely disrobed. And he's either whining for the pitch or fighting off invisible demons. It's hard to tell from the booth, ladies and gentlemen. But there's the pitch, strike, pirates from the game. They're rushing on the field to grab Doc. He is now defecating into his own glove. As is tradition. You guys are awesome, by the way. And Austin, please tip that one for a lot of money. I will see you guys later. Stay free, guys. Leo! Yeah! Awesome, Leo Step brought to you by Stay Free, ladies and gentlemen. Awesome.